What's up, YouTube? Check this out. Yeah, this is one of my interactive pieces. I haven't done one of these in a long time, so I'm gonna bring them back and we're gonna go behind the scenes of how I made this one right here. So let's get into it. So yeah, so first off, uh, I do a lot of interactive pieces. You can kind of check out the playlist that I have. And that basically just shows you how I use interactive artwork and com different components. But this one right here is going to Lyon, France uh, for an art tech conference. So this one has the digital 2.1 channel amplifier board and the bare conductive touch board. I use that all the time. And the Dayton Audio sound exciters. For this one, I actually had to build the platforms for the different boards. So I use my Dremel 3D45 printer to print out a platform for the different circuit boards that I had going inside. And once I have a placement of all the different components, I then go ahead and sort of sketch out where I want to put the capacitive sensors. And the capacitive sensors is basically what will be used to sort of activate or trigger the different audio files or the audio sound or send that MIDI signal. I usually use conductive paint, which is something I can just paint on. Conductive paint is basically just charcoal uh, that is sort of burnt and it turns into carbon and carbon is very conductive. But, you know, for, for me over the years, I've found that using conductive paint sometimes does not work long term. And it's very difficult sometimes to acquire and to sort of keep stored up for a long time because it does dry out. So I started using copper tape, which is just as conductive and more sort of readily available on the open market in different stores. So I'm able to just order this easily online, like places like Amazon. So for this one, I have eight different areas that I want to trigger or to be hooked up to the circuit board. And the two on the left and the right are like the largest ones and after I have all of them placed and they're not touching each other I just drill holes so that I can then connect those sort of different areas to the back of the canvas sort of disguising any hardware or any you know wires going around it so just going straight through the canvas to actually connect to that touchboard. So this part is basically more tech and science and engineering and problem solving more so than any sort of art stuff. So it's one of those things that I really like because I get to use both sides of my brain. And now all I'm doing is just soldering wire from that copper tape to the back of the canvas so that the wire that connects to the back of the canvas or goes through the canvas will be able to connect that copper tape to that touch board. And this is why copper tape I think is a lot better than the conductive paint, mainly because it's very difficult to connect wire to paint or con that conductive paint, whereas the copper wire, I'm able to just solder it really easy. And now that I have all the wires going to the back of the painting, I know where they're sticking out. Now I'm able to go back and place those components back in their places. And for the sound exciters, the sound exciters are basically sort of like a speaker that connects to an actual hard surface and vibrates that surface, turning that surface, surface into sort of like the speaker itself. So I wanted to make sure it had great adhesion and sort of like connected to the hard surface of the wood panel canvas. So I use that primer to prime it and just make sure there's a smooth surface for it to sort of grab onto, mainly because this is plywood. And once I have everything affixed, I can then flip the canvas back and forth uh, to sort of just try out the different sensors and troubleshoot uh, when I want to. But everything right now is basically in place and then it's basically putting down uh, the different wires or connecting the different wires and drilling a hole so that I have an easy access to sort of plug things in um, from the back of the canvas. So this is basically what it looks like at the current moment. And then when I flip it over, let's check it out. And all I'm doing here is just flipping it over and checking out the speakers, the sound exciters to see if they're working correctly. So I just connected it through the Bluetooth that the amplifier uh, has and really just see exactly the sound quality. And I love the sound quality. I have to sort of tinker around with it. There's no interface on the amplifier. So I have to sort of adjust it by flipping it back and forth. So I want to try to get it dialed in. And now that everything is working correctly, I think I have a good sort of 
uh, gauge on the different sort of volume and features of the amplifier. I then can now start to prep the front of the canvas by sort of, you know, trying to cover everything up. And I do this by just using that spackle, that deck spackle to get rid of any sort of imperfections or dents or lumps that I've, you know, created from putting all this stuff on the front, like the soldering and the tape, and then using that same primer, really good primer to actually go across the entire canvas so that you're able to hide, you know, the copper wire and the soldering and some of the other stuff that I put on that front of the canvas to sketch stuff out and to map stuff out. So now it feels and looks like an actual blank canvas. And that's what we really want. We want to sort of have a blank canvas to sort of have our creative mind be able to paint on that canvas without having the distraction of the different components. The next step is to add the stretched canvas on top of that. So getting a blank piece of canvas, which is really cheap and it's unprimed, so I'm gonna to have to prime it afterwards. But I really like painting on top of primed canvas way better than any wood panel canvas or a sort of unfinished canvas. So, you know, I just like having that canvas feel, that sort of brush going across uh, you know, a gessled, a newly gessled piece of uh, fabric. So that is sort of like my uh, aesthetic or just like my preference. So that's why I'm sort of putting a, a canvas on top. You don't have to do that, but this is why I like to do it. And it just adds another layer in between the sensors and, you know, the paint and the viewer. So it just disguises the entire interactive piece just a little bit more. So now I'm introducing warm tap water to the canvas because it's a cotton canvas. And when you introduce water to cotton, it shrinks. And that's how I'm getting rid of a lot of the loose areas, those different wrinkles. This is something that you can use for regular canvas as well. So like a painting that's dented or it has like sort of like a, a little bit of looseness to it, you can add water to the back of that. If it's cotton, it will shrink and then it will be a lot tighter. So after I get the sort of the water to dry, I basically just hit it with that gesso and make sure that every inch is covered. I sand it down a little bit more and then I introduce more gesso to it just to make sure that there's great coverage. I'm going to throw a ton of paint on top of this anyway, um, but I just like having a really, really white surface, a blank surface to work from. And once this dries, then comes the part where I hold my breath and hopefully when I hook everything back up, all the different sensors still work. So we're gonna let this dry and then hook everything back up and let's see if it works. So now that everything's dry, let's see. So now that we have everything hooked up to Ableton Live, that is the music producing program that I've been using for a long time. It works with that touch board. We're hooking it up, we're just testing it out, and we're making sure we're adjusting the sensitivity of the different sensors or the trigger elements. And now that we have everything working, we can actually start painting on it. So I blasted it with a ton of spray paint. And a funny thing about this piece is that I use myself as a reference. And that's because I had a saxophone in my studio and that saxophone was going to be used on sort of another mural reference. And it didn't work out uh, because the wall changed and they wanted something different. So I had a saxophone that I bought in my studio and it was just laying around and I said, you know what, let me use this and take a picture of myself and just get different reference photos that I can use for random things here and there. So this is actually me. I'm not vain. I'm not sort of, you know, a narcissist, you know, in love with myself. I just um, like to use reference photos that I take myself. I got into the point to where I stopped sort of going online looking for photos and I just make sure that I use everything that I take because it's just, there's just more uh, thoughtfulness behind uh, an image or a reference when you take it yourself. So that is why I have a reference of myself. So whoever gets this piece in Lyon, France, um, I will be with you forever until, you know, the piece is then sold again on the second market. But uh, here it is. Check this out.
that's all created from back here. Sound exciters, touch board, amp, all hooked up to Ableton down here. 